My oh my, Microsoft isn't even trying to hide the fact that Windows is spyware anymore. In fact, they're pretty much marketing the spyware as its greatest feature now. Like, I've always just operated under the assumption that any software that I'm not able to study the source code of is spyware. And I think that's a sane assumption to make because there's really no other way for you to confirm otherwise. And hell, even with open source software, we've seen that it's possible to sneak nasty stuff in and have it not be detected for a long time, like what we saw with the XZ backdoor. But the spyware assumption with Windows, for me, used to just be that principle of all proprietary software is spyware until proven otherwise, combined with the fact that Microsoft literally does targeted advertising in the login screen and the start menu, so they obviously have a financial incentive to turn their OS into spyware. But when I saw this news, that Microsoft is gonna be adding this new feature called Recall to Windows 11 that uses AI to record everything that you're doing within your desktop OS so that you can then browse back through what you were doing later on throughout the day, or I mean, it pretty much records the history of everything you do once you turn it on. When I saw this, I thought there's no way that anybody could want this feature. Like it's just taking screenshots of what you're doing every five seconds if the content that's on your screen changes. And you know, this new bit of spyware is also very resource heavy. In order to use System Recall, your PC needs to have 16 gigs of RAM, eight logical processors, and at least 256 gigs of storage capacity. And to really get the most out of this AI, Microsoft wants new PCs to have a dedicated neural processing unit built into them that's capable of 40 trillion operations per second. I mean, it's honestly mind blowing that this will one day become the base system requirements for Microsoft's OS, or at least Microsoft's OS with AI spyware enabled, which of course is how they're going to build out the OS experience. I mean, in the future, if you're not running their AI, then you're just going to be experiencing the discount version of Windows. Like back in the day, the recommended requirements for Windows XP was 128 megabytes of RAM, two gigs of free space, and a 300 megahertz processor. That was it. And if you wanted a spyware ridden digital assistant on your computer, then you could always install Bonsai Buddy. That's right. This cheeky purple monkey from the late 90s was peak digital helper technology. And this guy, along with my boy Clippy, they could run circles around Copilot Plus on a processor that Windows 11 wouldn't even be able to boot off of. And don't get fooled into thinking that these Copilot Plus requirements or even Windows 11's requirements are just normal for a modern desktop. Like, oh yeah, we've got so much RAM. We've got DDR5 and DDR6 is on the horizon. I mean, why not just use all these system resources? Surely it must be normal, right? Well, no. Lightweight Linux and BSD distros still carry similar system requirements to what Windows XP needed. Because when you strip away all of the bloat, this is all that most people really need in a modern PC. The rest is just for Microsoft and the government's global spying apparatus to work at its full efficiency. And I also love how things like recall are being described as an AI feature because it's literally just screenshots, like screenshots that are taken at a specific time interval I mean, this kind of capability has been built into remote access Trojans for decades at this point. Uh, but of course, we've got to call it AI so that the tech consumers will eat it up and get excited to consume new product. Now, Microsoft says in their post about recall that all of the screenshots are just stored locally on your computer. And really this local processing and local analysis is one of the big benefits that Microsoft is claiming to bring with these Copilot Plus PCs. So instead of having to send 
input to an AI that's running remotely on a server somewhere and then sends you the output back, the Copilot AI is supposed to just run locally. Now in theory, this sounds really good for privacy because if everything stays local, you don't have to trust that some company out there is not going to monetize your chat logs that you had with your AI girlfriend. And also you get your results much faster because you don't have to worry about any network latency, you know, sending data half a world away and then receiving it back. But this theoretical privacy can only be theoretical at best because all of the software that's running on these systems is proprietary. And it's actually even worse than that because all of the new Copilot Plus PCs are going to have Microsoft's Pluton security processor enabled on them by default. Now, if you're not familiar with Microsoft's Pluton, it's pretty much the same thing as the Intel management engine. And if you haven't heard of that, then you should read up on it. Um, but the difference is that this security chip is connected straight to Microsoft's cloud. They literally describe it as Microsoft Pluton security processor is a chip to cloud security technology. So essentially this gives Microsoft hardware level control over every PC that has one of these chips on them. And you can bet that Microsoft will exercise that control over people's PCs either on their own or most likely at the request of the government. We've seen time and time again how governments have been crying out and even passing laws to regulate AI or ban you from using AI for specific purposes under the excuse that it's to protect children or it's to fight terrorism. And the EU has proposed what they call chat control under the same protect the children excuse. And this law, if passed, would require devices to have client side scanning on them in order to prevent the spread of CSAM. And the only way to effectively implement some kind of client side scanning like this that can't be bypassed is with a hardware chip like Pluton that has its own network stack and its own dedicated resources that the end user cannot manipulate or interact with directly. And that can also be used to prevent you from running certain apps like Tor or BitTurn applications. It can prevent you from connecting to certain VPNs and it can even prevent you from dual booting Linux in order to avoid the spyware. This is why if you really care about your privacy, you'll avoid putting any important data through a Copilot Plus PC at all costs. And I know some people are waking up to this because earlier this week on Base.Win, a customer purchased the ThinkPad T61 that Mike refurbished on his YouTube channel, the employed Linux user. And as the title of that video says, this computer is going to be the first of many. So you'll have more chances to get yourself a spyware free computer like this and on base.win you can purchase it with a secure untraceable payment system like Monero. So not only are you going to save money purchasing your freedom respecting computer on base.win, but when the government outlaws devices like this, there won't be any paper trail for them to follow. So be sure to bookmark base.win so that you can get yourself a freedom respecting PC in the future. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your weekend.